I'm out in the garage today to install this little turn signal beeper that I've created. I found it on my uh, Yamaha XT225 that the turn signal indicator light is really super hard to see in the daylight and I'm just, I'm just not paying that much attention to it. I find myself riding for a mile down the road and then realizing that the turn signal's still on. Back in the 80s, my dad had a Kawasaki with one of these turn signal beepers on it, stock from the factory, and I remember it working well. So I thought I'd give it a shot, see if that helps me uh, with this challenge. So I will show you how I constructed this one, and then we'll, take, uh, we'll put it on the bike and take it for a test run. Here is the buzzer and the wiring that I created. This is a seven or eight dollar Radio Shack buzzer. It's 86 dB, I believe. It's a constant tone buzzer, and it's very important since we're tapping into the signal flash on the motorcycle, and that provides the pulse, that you get a constant buzzer and not a pulsing buzzer. I did make a mistake on my first version. I got a pulsing buzzer, and there was, uh, there was some conflict with the flasher. So constant buzzer. It has negative and positive leads. We'll trace this negative lead back down and you can see that I've uh, created a jumper here so that I have bullet connectors and I can just, on the motorcycle, unplug a negative uh, wire from the wiring harness and plug it right into here. I'm not having to cut anything on the wiring harness. Same goes for these positive leads that go up to the buzzer. One is for the left flasher, one's for the right flasher doesn't matter which is which, they have a jumper so that I can just pull apart existing wiring, plug them right in. One thing that's very important that you don't see visibly here is underneath this wiring on each side, I have a Zener diode. And this diode allows the electricity to come up from the flasher individually to the buzzer, but say we're using the right flasher when the pulses come up, the Zener diode allows it to pass this way, but it prevents it from going back down into the other side and creating a short. So it's just a one-way flow of electric current from either side up to the buzzer. So let's plug it in. We'll give it a listen. Uh, I think I mentioned this is my second version, and uh, hopefully everything works the way that it should. On the Yamaha here, there's just one screw to remove underneath the headlight cowl. And then it should pop right off. To plug in the wiring, we want to find the leads from the turn signals, which on this motorcycle is super easy. Right and left. Uh, we also have a ground, very visible there, that they're leading into. So, with the buzzer, let's first disconnect one of these grounds and then plug that negative jumper cable in there. It's good. On the right turn signal, the flasher uh, wire is green. We'll unplug that. Plug one of these positives into it. And then the left side flasher, the positive cable, the flasher cable is what they refer to as chocolate. And we'll plug that in. I'm going to go ahead and just sit the buzzer here for now. And with the key on, good news is that the running lights on the uh, turn signals are on constantly. There's nothing crazy going on, nothing crazy going on with the headlight. Let's now try the turn signals. Great, right side works fine. And the left side. Now it's a matter of fixing the buzzer somewhere I think I'm just going to affix it right now to the inside of the headlight cowl uh, just because I want to 
ride with it a bit, make sure everything's working the way that I want it before I come up with a more permanent measure. I've gone ahead and pulled the buzzer from the bike and we'll uh, stick it there onto the inside of the cowl. First using a little bit of uh, electronic cleaner just to clean the surfaces. And then I'll use this uh, double-sided styrofoam tape to adhere it just for this temporary test. Let's see, that's great. Should be plenty strong. I'm able to pick it up by the buzzer uh, for this, uh, this go round. And we'll button it all back up and take it for a test run. Let's do a little road test. Now I'm not sure how well you'll be able to hear the buzzer, uh, simply because the microphone is mounted inside my helmet so it's very close to my mouth and the power is turned way down low. The volume, uh, recording volume is way low on it. So you probably don't hear the bike super well. Let's try the turn signal. To my ear it's great. really audible. So uh, we'll give it a test. It's the beginning of October, but man is it humid. It's certainly not feeling like the beginning of fall just yet. So we're coming up on our first stop sign. It's really audible, the buzzer. Now, how does it do with the revs? Still audible above the revs. I would say that's just about the right amount of volume without being obnoxious. I don't know how it plays to other drivers. But uh, it's, I like it. I think it's working well. Try this right hander. Still really audible. I'll let it go a little longer. That's good. I hear it just fine. I hope you can too. The original plan was to just ride around the block, but I think this uh, requires a little further investigation, the testing of this buzzer, so at least another hour or so. So I'm going to go for a ride. I'm going to leave a link here to my website so that you can get a little more information on the build of the buzzer, some of the specific parts that were used. And uh, please let me know if you give this a go, what you think of it. And above all, ride safe, have fun. See you next video.